Hello YouTube and welcome to a new Unity 3D tutorial. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is basically give our character some animation to hit with the sword. So we're going to create a basic cylinder sword, just basic. But we're going to make it so when we press the mouse button and we select the sword, he strikes. Because then eventually on that, we can make it so if he hits the enemy with it, we hit him. So it's really, really simple. But the only issue is we don't have a character in this scene, so we're going to have to use a separate AI, then just like get rid of it. So we're going to get uh, the farmer, I believe will be the best one because he's not got all the stuff on him. So we're going to duplicate him, drag him out, and we'll call him Tom Dickinson. There we go, I don't know, just a random weird name because we're going to delete him after. So, we're going to go into him and we'll just, we don't really need, well that's all we really need, we just need him, like that, animation. So, we're going to create a basic cylinder sword just for now, so, capture on a cylinder, and create a cylinder, that'd be better. We'll make it really, really, really thin. Yeah, that's good enough, and we'll say, give, him a, give it a cube. Let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Oh, we can drag it out here. Go to our top view. Again, Unity is not the best for this stuff, but hey, it works. So that's good enough for a sword. What do you all think of my sword? What I might do is scale it this way a tiny, tiny bit. Because then that way it looks a bit sharper than it actually is. So, yeah. So we'll call this, in fact we'll put a new game object on it, and we'll call this game object sword, and the best place to put it would actually to be to put the handle where the pivot point is. So if we were to go, where's our sword, select the handle, I can't remember the name of that one, and we'll get the blade, and stick these two in the sword prefab here. What we're going to do is send them both to zero, 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 like so, but then move the blade upwards. So if they're both at zero, 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 that's there, we're going to click the blade and move it up where it should be, but then select your handle and move it up too. So just so when we click the sword, the actual pivot point is the handle, because then when we attach it to the character, it'll be where it needs to be, right there, see? So we can animate from the pivot point, it'll get, well, return much better. So I'm going to go in here and just rotate this handle 90 degrees, just because it'll work out better for us if it's that way, and I'll do the same for this. Because then it'll work out much better. So we can position this into our character's hand. So, as you can see, if we rotate it from the pivot point, it it's much easier to handle. So we'll go to the side view and rotate it so it looks like he's holding it. Stick it in his hand. Rotate a bit more. This is going to look terribly inappropriate for a moment. Oh no. Ah, redo. There we go. Stick it in his hand. And not there. Definitely needs to be over here. So let's see what it looks like. We're a bit of modelling and tweaking, we could eventually make that look awesome, but hey, it looks good so far. So he's got a sword, perfect. Now let's quickly stick down the sword in a prefab in case we accidentally delete it, because you know what I'm like. So we'll go to weapons and we'll just drag sword into it. So we have a sword prefab, brilliant. So where's Tom Dickinson here? So we find his arm, because it needs to be on his hand or his arm, so when we move him about, it will stay with it the one it should. So let's drag this out some more. I believe it's this arm. No, wrong arm. This is left arm. So we can stick it in his hand here because then if we rotate his hand, I probably wouldn't want him to walk away like that. But hey, it'll work. So we can stick the sword in there. Boom. So now when we rotate his hand, the sword comes with it. Now you can see where we're going with it. So when we attack, tack, tack, tack. Tack, 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 and it'll follow him so you don't have to animate the sword and the hand separately it'll all be one so I'm going to move Tom Dickinson away from this farm or else we're going to get so confused there we go 
So, we have his hand, now let's to begin animating an attack. And yes, I have done it left handed because eventually I want to make it dual handed. And yes, that is a picture with his like trousers on the thing. But yeah. So if we. I'm just trying to find the best way to do it. Now, which one should we animate? Well, it'll definitely be this arm, this part not moving, but this arm would be. So it'll definitely be this one. And this one. Yeah, so it'll be. Yeah, let's just experiment. So. We, w we shouldn't have to move the sword at all, but you never know. So, we're going to go to this one here. Because, chop, chop, chop. Yeah. So, we're going to go window animation. As you can see, it's already got one. So, we're going to create a new animation. And we're in the animations folder, we're going to create one called weapons. In fact, not weapons, attack. That's even better. Attacks. And we'll call this Sword Attack 1. And the reason I'm putting 1 is because, well, we want more sword attacks. We'll make it randomize, add some combos in, make it awesome. So, I'm going to keep it at s there because we, I don't know how long this is going to be. So, let's begin. So, I'm just going to go for the basic. He s lifts his arm up. Like, so, he rotates it, he swipes, he comes back. That's all I'm going to go for. So, in this first scene, I'm just going to create a random keyframe for it. And then I'm going to go to a second. In fact, we'll go half a second. Oh, his arm fully rotated and he's pulled back to begin the slashing. Like so, so. He comes back like that. Then at one, he'll swing round like that but he'll drop it down there so he goes slash slash he comes into slash he slashes but then we don't want it to jump back so maybe he huh. yeah he'll start to come back round so if we drag his arm round bring it in we can then come back to this first one and copy the um, rotations of it. Notice how I am not putting it on the... Um, I am not moving to position, purely rotation, it just saves time and it's like... Why would you want to hold the position unless you're going to throw it? You don't really need to, so... There, so now if we play it, it should attack and then come back to normal. Slash. Slash slash perfect so now I'm going to go into even deeper into his arm to his forearm so we can begin editing this one so let's see so by here I want him to have gone rotate his arm a little bit so he's pulled it back a little bit it gives it a bit more animation then at this one he's rotated it even more he's starting to bend his arm in to attack but yeah he's still coming in then here is the end of our animation. So, can we copy keyframes? This would be so helpful if we can copy keyframes. Ah, we can't copy keyframes. So, we're going to copy the rotations and put it exactly back how it was. In 3ds Max, which I suggest you doing something like that to do your animation, you can copy keyframes. That's why I was testing it. So it'd be so much easier to do it in. The only issue I've found with doing animations in 3ds Max is you can't have separate ones like this. You have to have them all as one. But slash, slash. Now we, we, in fact, I think we should begin trying to move rest of his body as well because we'll drag his leg back a little bit. So his left thigh. What we got? We don't want his toe. So this one here, when he begins, his leg will be normal, but then at 30, well, point 30, we'll drag his foot back, so like where he's, he's standing to get ready. And we forgot to put this normal. Uh, come on, what are you doing? So here, we'll go there, 30-ish, we'll come 
bring his leg back so it looks like he's positioned himself. One, I don't know, he flips his leg out to the side and then it comes back to normal, which is this keyframe here. That one. That either sounds like someone's taking their billion or thundering, but it really shouldn't be thundering in the middle of summer. But yeah, so we stick that in. And now if we play it, slap his leg randomly moves. It looks awful, but hey, it's going to be done. So he's put his leg back. I'm gonna pull it out so like he tries to balance himself as he comes in for a swing. Let's see what it looks like. Oh dear. I raised this one. I don't want it on this one. That one messed up big time. Right, okay, we'll just play it like that. So we have an animation for Sword Attack. Brilliant. But we need to make it play. So the only way we're going to be able to add our animations to the character frames to use it is by starting at the source. Because if we attach it to this one, that would be equivalent of attacking, attaching it to Tom Dickinson, so it wouldn't do anything. We need to attach it to the entity folder or the character from the source, so our character creation. This is really, really simple to do. So if we find just our process line, so we go down this way, we want to get the last script we, we've got. So we may, need to make sure that we've already selected our gender. So you can put it on pretty much any script except gender, like size and armor, but I'm going to put it on start so it adds it right at the end while it's loading. So just to, before it ends and transfers, I'm going to put add animations. And what we need to do in order to add animations is if we look at one of these, these are what we'll be using, but they'll rename differently. We need here for them to store an animation component which it doesn't do. So we need to create a component for it. So this is really simple to do. We're going to type game object dot find character because if you remember when we started creating this um, the way we accessed the character each time was we went game object dot find character there. That's how we always found our character near the end. So game object dot find that character dot and then if we type add component and then we type in um, brackets and speech marks what component we want to add so you can add sphere collider audio source anything you like so I'm going to type animation so I want it to add an animation component so if we were to run that you would see that when we press that last button and it adds it to our character you'll see that it adds an animation component so as you see, if I click our character, let's go out of the way and click main char, you'll see that an animation component has been added. Now we will eventually have to add our animations here, which we again have to do in here, and it's really simple to do again. So what we're going to do is create a new variable all the way up at the top here, and we'll call it, we'll just do it here, animations var animations animation clip and make it an array. And what that'll do is store animation clips, what we literally drag from the project. The only issue with this method is until we make it actually load from the resources, we'll always have to add animations we want our character to have. So stuff like walking, talking, running, idle, we just have to add it to this, but that's not such a bother. So here we'll type for var i equals zero, i is less than animations.length, so create a variable called i, it's less than the length of animations we put in, i++. plus plus. So in here we'll type game object dot find character, so we grab hold of our character. Then what we want to do is grab the animation of it, um, the animation component, and add um, clips to it. Now unlike others, so if you imagine a collider, we just type um, game object dot find dot collider it's the same with animation so we type dot animation dot add clip just like that and then in here first thing we do is to say which animation we want to add well as soon as it's in a for loop we'll type animations bracket i but the only weird thing after is you have to give the animation a name it can't use the default name this still it isn't really much of a bother I'm just simply going to type in brackets and speech marks um, animation underscore and then plus i dot to string 
so that should um, create add all our animations to it and then give it a name of animation underscore then the number of it in, in our main camera we'll see that when it loads in our stat select we'll get an array for animations like that so in here we had all the animations we want our character to have so of course we want him to have sword attack 1 death 1, death 2 idle and walking that's all we're going to give him the walking one won't technically work yet but that's all we're going to give him so if we were to click play that now you'll see that when we load it on the next scene he'll automatically have them now if we play oh these girls look awfully a lot alike um, we go to character and click main char boom we have all their animations However, it is a bit difficult to get it, but when I figure out what the what code is, I don't want to be giving you wrong code to actually get the name, we'll just use that. Seems easier. But you can't put it without a name, it has to have a name. So, we now need to test it to tell it to run this animation. So, if we go back, we know that our animation, what we want it to run, is sword attack, so that'll be animation zero. So, now we can load, we have to stay on this one, in fact, never mind. We need. To, we don't need these no more. What we need to do is go and find our player fire script. Player fire. So in our actual sword attack, so four, we can't run it straight from the game no more if we want the sword because the animations won't have been added. So because we haven't got a character, but this is still easy to do. So we can type game object dot find and now we need the name of the object the animations are attached to so we currently attach it to the character which when we load it is called main char if you don't remember that call it wherever you is it will be in your if you go to your main camera and your stats not start select it's not when it first loads I, re I think it was character loading yes that one in here we have called it I honestly can't remember which one it was I apologize but basically we called it something along that what load your game up and whatever it's called I'll show you in a minute but just put main char for now so game object dot find main char dot animation dot play and now we put the name of our animation which is animation zero we do need to give it a proper name one day so if we were to run that now we need to create a character now but yeah so what I might end up doing is just sticking a default character in just so we're for testing purposes. So what I meant by um, what you've named your character is if you click your character, this one here, main char. So as you can see, they've all been added. Let's press 4 and press attack. And she attacks. Woohoo! So we've now got different attacks. They'd not be able to kill anyone yet. So that's all we're going to do for this tutorial. You can't attack no one and we'll eventually add the weapons to it and everything. But it's only basic. Now we do have a lot of glitches in it at the moment and a lot of um, things that can go wrong like um, not being able to well name the animations properly or anything but we have got the sword attack working we will eventually put it in properly but thank you for watching I hope you do like it please join my Facebook group below and please like this video to show me how much you like it and see you next time